In the previous video, I pressed out the bushings in the front lower control arm on my 95 Civic. In this video, I continue the work and finally install the new polyurethane bushings. So here's the energy suspension kit that I got that has the bushings for this part on the lower control arm. They also came with these, and I have yet to figure out what they're for. But I'm going to go ahead and press these in, and press these in using the press. And of course I'm going to use the grease that they supplied with the kits. I'll apply it here. All around. This grease is really sticky. I also put some on the inside of the bushing where the sleeve goes. All right, now for the other side. And there you have it. New bushings on the front lower control arm. I like the red, I really do. I did some research and they go on the top of stock shocks, but since I have coilovers, I don't need these. It looks like I'm gonna have fun getting this guy out because it will be replaced with this. So I don't even see an easy way to take it out, but I'm glad I have the press. I don't know if this is the ideal approach, but I'm going to try and press this, the old dowel out using the new one and then see if I can get the rubber parts out. Yeah, it ended up pushing the whole thing out, which is good. Now I just got to figure out how to receive it. So I got a sleeve out of a ball joint service kit that I have. And I'm going to push directly on the center, the center of the bushing to see if that will knock it out. Uh-oh. New tools, new problems. So I press the, I press the press into the bushing to push it out and now it's stuck on the bushing so Ah, it was just this caught up. So it worked, got it out. So now, oh crap, I don't remember which way it went. So I had to review the videotape, but the thicker side, this side, goes towards, towards this stud here. So it's gonna go in this way and yeah, I'm gonna grease up. I'm gonna grease up this area and press it in. We'll see how this goes. All right, now let's go back over to the car and try and install it finally. All right, so. It goes back on this way, and according to the diagram, you do reuse the, fast re the factory washers. If you look at the washers, only one of them can go on the, the larger part of the sleeve. And based on the witness marks, it looks like it was concave toward the bushing. So that goes on like that. That goes on like that. That goes on like that. And is this the nut for it? And that is the nut for it, I think. I'm gonna tie it down just so it doesn't move. All right, it's not moving, but under the weight of the vehicle, it might wanna wiggle a little. So I'm gonna snug it a little more. And now, 
it looks like we can attach it back to the car. It's taking a bit of wiggling and convincing, but it all goes back together relatively smoothly. Now for the sway bar bracket. I actually had trouble getting the bolt in for the sway bar bracket, but I knew once I attached the lower control arm, it would lift everything up and make it easier to align. So I left one bolt out until I did that. And then reattaching the lower control arm is pretty straightforward. And I am gonna use a jack to help with that one. That is the lower control arm bushings installed. And this kit was called the shock mount kit. But that there and the one further back came in the lower control arm kit. And thankfully, lining up everything else made this one a lot easier to get to. So now I'm finally going to knock out the bushings on the upper control arm. First, I need to take the castle nut off. So this pin needs to come out. And the castle nut needs to come off. That is a 17 mm Let's see if this will come off easily. And that boot has seen better days. So now I'm thinking about replacing them. Nothing fell right on my leg. Please don't bleed. Please don't bleed. Yeah, no blood. All right, so with that free, we can go up top and remove the nuts up there. So now we can take that nut off and that nut off. And I believe they are also 17 millimeters. So now we can just push this up and out of the way. Now I could have removed the upper control arm without dropping the coilover, but it is a lot better for me anyway to work with the whole thing outside of the wheel well. And I did have to remove the fork again to give myself more clearance. All right, that allowed the shock to come down far enough to get the upper control arm off. Now let's look at these bushings. So these guys, those black bushings in there will be replaced by these. They'll look better, but nobody will see them. So now we have to take those bolts off and take this out. Not too bad, not too bad. You're always concerned working with these old cars, but that wasn't bad at all. So that's one side. There we go. So now I'm gonna press the old bushing out. I have a socket from an axle nut kit here, then an impact socket there, I believe this upper one's a 24 millimeter. And yeah, I don't know what this socket 
that's receiving it is, but it's big enough that it can receive the whole bushing. Have I said yet that I really appreciate having this press? This has been money well spent. So there's the old bushing. You can repeat the same thing on the other side. Easy work. So now I'm gonna consult the instructions to make sure I push the new ones in, in the right direction. So I'm gonna grease up the new one. Plenty of grease, plenty of grease. Initially, I could not get it to go in. It kept shifting on me. I'm at a loss. This should not be this difficult. All right, I'm gonna try a different approach. I'm employing all my trickery right now. All right. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Let's see if it goes straight in. I wonder how much was, was the combo I used and how much was luck. We'll see if this goes right in. Look at that. Sometimes you just need a little bit of creativity. If you've done this and you did not have this trouble, Please, please tell me what you did. Because this was a lot of fun. All right. What the heck, I'm gonna try and install it right now. All right, so it goes like this. And it is a good snug fit. Look at his big ant. Look at that big ass ant. Damn. What you are, you are dying. Sorry, sorry for y'all. Got crazy animals coming in here. I ain't trying to mess with them, but that one big ant, I wasn't messing with it. Ta da! Now let's put it back in. All right, so now we can put this back in. These function informed type ones are holding up pretty good. So now the fork bolt. Let's see, am I strong enough yet? Do it without the jack. Let's see. Nah, I don't think I'm strong enough. Oh, it's right there. So the passenger side is done. So now I'm gonna play the same game on the other side. I am also in the middle of an oil change and this mod is long overdue. I tried it once decades ago and I love it. So I'll be putting this Fumoto valve on the Civic 2. If you aren't familiar, you replace your drain plug with this 
and it just has a lever for you to drain it. So you really need no tools to do your oil change. And for people that are concerned with the lever not locking, they also provide this little lock. But the lever does lock in in that little slot right there. I have never had any issues with it and my wife absolutely loves them too. So that's going on too. And that is it. I am excited to drive the car with the new bushings and I will definitely report back with how I think it feels. If you'd like to follow along as I continue to maintain and improve my 95 Civic, hit subscribe. If you'd like to see the work I've already done on my Civic, check out my playlist. Thanks for watching. Take care.